Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm with Peggy Beer of Connecting With Nature CIC, and she's gonna show you how to make a wet felted small bag and a needle felted leaf, like this. Let's get going. So today, I'm joined by Peggy Beer from Connecting Nature CIC, and it's actually Peggy that's gonna take over and do everything today. We've been doing some projects that I'll talk about later on when we hopefully get to have a chat while we're making things, where Peggy's gonna get into who she is and what she does, and also interest to do with natural crafts of all kind. Also, quick shout out to where we are today. So we've been luckily given access to an Airbnb. I will put links and things down below. A bit different to what it would normally look like, but I quite like it, I quite like it. I mean, there's a few eyes in the rooms that are watching me, but other than that, <laughs> I like it, it's very cool. So I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna get out of the way and Peggy's gonna get on with wet felting and needle felting for today. Okay, thank you, Jason. So today, if you're gonna make a bag, Jason's decided he would like a bag about this size. So we've chosen a stone from the river. If you are working with children or someone who's got smaller hands, then I think really nice, easy projects are stones that just fit into the hand. So people can just felt around them <clears throat> and get like little mini bags. But today, We've decided to make a bit of a bigger bag so this is going to be roughly the size they will shrink again so when you choose your stones or whatever you're working with make sure to remember they will get a little bit smaller than the actual stone okay so choose a stone of yeah a little bit bigger than the size you wanted obviously use some wool there we've just chosen some really lovely autumn colors so you got colors of the autumn of autumn leaves different shades and I think I'm going to work with the ones in here they're going to be no actually those ones are going to be for the leaves here so we're going to make some leaves for the needle felting which I leave here for now and those are the ones I'm going to work with for the bag so this is carded merino wool tops that's what they're called or you can also just um, ask for felting wool when you buy the wool um, obviously it's really lovely to make your use your own wool if you have got sheep or if you got spare wool if the wool is not ready made felting wool then you definitely would want to wash the wool before just to get the lanolin out because yeah lanolin is the substance which is naturally in wool and if you have the lanolin in it will stop it from felting so really important Wash your wool first with some soap, ideally in a washing machine. Just get the soap out, not too hot, because obviously we are working with wool. And you can't have it too hot, otherwise it will shrink. Get all that together. We got the wool, we got the stones. We got some sort of, um, yeah, either a fly screen material sort of style or some bubble wrap. And I've also got two bowls with water here. So just like... Just some standard bowls. One is filled with cold water. I'm going to bring that in a little bit. And the other one is going to get filled with hot water from my kettle. So it needs to just cool down a tiny bit. We don't want it boiling hot, but we want it really fairly hot. And then I got a third bowl. I've got some lovely soap in here. And those are basically all the things we need. I also cover this table up. This is a really lovely wooden table, but obviously we don't want to get anything on the table and it is a little bit messy working felting. So we'll get a little bit, yeah, probably just a little bit of water and soap on the table. So make sure if you have got some lovely table or something to cover that up. Brilliant, let's get started. Okay, stoned at the ready. And I think I'm going to go for some nice warm colors. So we'll see how we all mix it together. But I basically want to make a first layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the stone completely in the wool. So I don't want to have anything looking out. Okay. So with those wool bits, they are really lovely to attach. So I'm going to just rip off a piece of the strand and I'm gonna just like spread them out a little bit just like this so you don't want them all 
in one fat piece or they won't felt. So at this point, it doesn't matter if there's any gaps or any holes here. I'm just basically just spreading it out. I'm finding it easier to work on the table, but yeah, just do what works for you. As I said, if you have got smaller stones and it's your first time felting, it probably is a good idea just to have a little go on a smaller stone first, just because it's much easier. It doesn't actually need to be a stone. I've seen those projects being made with bowls or all sorts of um, materials. So anything you can find that is basically the shape of whatever you want to make is fine. And you could even use cardboard for that if you had a piece of cardboard inside because you can stretch it out afterwards. Okay, so this is sort of what we want, almost like a little parcel. And I'm gonna add a few colors in now. If you struggle and this is gonna, this is coming off, you can wet your stone a little bit at this stage. Well, not the stone, the wool actually. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add a few more colors onto this one. Another way is just um, taking this off, the st oh, leaving it off the stone, having it all lying out here. Take your stone away and add the colors into this. And obviously, depending which way you're wrapping your stone, one side will be the inside and the other one will be the outside. So you could even mix and match and make different colors for the inside and for the outside. And have a two colored bag. I don't want to cover it up too much because I still want to see a little bit of the yellow. So I think I'm going to go for something like that, pulling it apart a bit more. And I'm going to add the Sec the third color. Okay. So whilst I'm doing this, I'm also actually looking out for holes. So I can see a little bit of the tablecloth through my wool here. And wherever I can still see a little bit, I am actually putting more fibers, more layers down. So you kind of want a little bit of an even um, structure here. It doesn't always get completely even. Sometimes you will, if I just check here, there's definitely more wool here than there is on the outside. And that's fine too. You can still add some fibers in later on when you, if you struggle and you find there are some holes. This is basically just the first layer. When we start felting, you might notice <clears throat> that the fibers actually don't look anymore the way you started off. So they will change a bit. Obviously they will move in, move around a little bit. So don't be too focused on making exactly the piece lying it out the way you want it because there will be some slight changes it will move around okay i'm actually going to wet this a little bit now because i get a feeling when i try and turn it around it will all just move around loads and i also got a feeling there's still places where it's a bit thinner so i will add some more wool on later so i'm going to keep the wool really nearby but just going to put it away for a minute now. So I'm going to use my water. So if some people really like to use a sprayer, they work quite well if you wanted to, or just use some water and spread it around. And then this point you can, you can actually see, I'm going to just demonstrate that now. If I try to do anything with that, it would just all get stuck on my fingers and would just be a real mess. So what I'm doing is, this is where the lovely, nice smelling soap comes in. Soap is not really actually needed in itself. Soap is really the thing that helps it all to be smooth, just so you can actually do the felting process, so you can use your hands and wrap around on it and you don't have all the fibers stuck on you or anything like that. So you can use the soap and either put it into the water and let the water get a bit soapy. And I really like using the soap and just having really nice soapy hands as well. So just do a bit of that. Still gets a bit stuck. And then I'm gonna use my stone so you can actually turn it this way. You can see the water hasn't quite seeped through. So I definitely wanna get it completely covered in water all of the felt so I'm gonna just wrap it around 
Um, as I said already, this is the messy bit. Okay, so I'll move it a bit more into the middle of the table. And I'm just wetting all of this. I use a little bit more soap. You can try and just gently it is, um, apply the uh, soap directly. Or I'm also going to let the soap sit in my cold water for a little bit. So at the minute I'm still using cold water. <clears throat> I'll let you know when the warm water comes in. Now this is the tricky bit. It's basically just turning it around and wrapping the stone completely like a little Christmas present, birthday present, with the wool. So it doesn't matter that it's not wrapped tightly at the minute. So you can see I'm just getting it into a shape now. Just get some soap on. More soap and more water. Wrap those ends around. There we go. So this still needs quite a bit more water. I'm just going to add more water to it again. Spread those out a bit more. If you had a small stone, then obviously this would be much easier because you can just you can even submerge the little stone in the water. I'm actually starting the extra felting now, which is basically just rubbing the wool. So you don't want to, at the beginning, you don't want to rub it too hard because you can see this is just really easy just to get it moved around and, and all the wool coming off or even yeah, getting holes in. So I'm still on the lookout for any holes or any gaps that might be there. I'm just spreading the wool out a little bit as well, put it into place. And um, basically a matter of wrapping your stone. So it's actually dripping here now, so yeah, nice and wet. And doing the felting like that. So you can either make the piece smaller, wrap it all around, and then do the felting like that. Or you can um, just felt without the material. You don't really need it. It does sometimes help if the wool is all in place and it's really good the way you want it, then it can be of advantage. But also I find if I put material on top, I do have to just take the material off every so often and just make sure that all the wool is still in place. <clears throat> and I don't just rub on one place and get loads of holes in it. Okay, so I'm gonna get my warm water ready now as well. Just checking, yeah, it's quite warm. I'm going to just pour the warm water into my bowl from the kettle and just leave it standing a bit. So it's really quite hot actually still. So I'm going to unwrap our little parcel now. So you can already see there's definitely something happening here. You've got a bit of felting going on here. Sometimes you have those sort of ridges which you can spread out a little bit. Or yeah, if I had like things like that. I could pull them, I would pull them a little bit just over the material just so you don't have those really big ridges. They do look nice sometimes as well so I might just leave one or two but generally you want to try and just even it out a bit more. Use the water to stick it down. So it's basically a matter of carrying on just with the felting. And every so often, I will actually dip my stone in the hot water. This is quite hot now, so I'm not going to dip it completely, just a little bit. Squeeze a bit of the water out. And you can see it's already shrinking a little bit into, onto the stone. And use some cold water. So it's basically this process of hot and cold water and I'll just take the stone back out and I just carry on rubbing, probably add a little bit more soap now because the soap has come off and yeah, carry on doing that until I'm happy with my end product. Obviously there are different stages of felting. Some people like to have it more fluffy, not as felted, 
but if you want to have a really good felt then you want to carry on for quite a bit longer yeah as i said probably another 10 minutes or so 15 minutes depending how you how long you want to do it um it will also shrink and felt in a bit more once we actually take it off the stone so do felt as much as you're happy until you're happy with it but don't worry if it's not quite done yet we can do a bit more without this stone as well okay i'm gonna put this to the side now and i think jason's gonna give me a hand doing a bit more of the felting as well we can do it together and in the meantime I am actually going to show you the process of needle felting. Brilliant. We are all set and ready to go. Table is a bit drier now. And I've got my board here, wooden board. And I also got this mat. So if you are new to needle felting, um, probably a good idea just to purchase a little kit. So in this kit, usually you will have like a foam mat sort of. And also you will have some needles. Now you can see, if I pull them like that, you might be able to see they're all different lengths and different thicknesses. Cookie cutter is a great method. You could just use a leaf from outside, um, draw the shape of the leaf onto your foam mat and then place the wool in the middle and try and make it according to shape. So. I've got needles and I've got those. They are like protectors for your fingers. I do use them definitely. So same thing like with the with the wet felding. I'm gonna spread my fibers out on the mat so you can actually really see through. So this is what I'm aiming for. I'm getting roughly the shape of the cookie cutter. So every so often I have a little try just so it gets, so I can place the cookie cutter above it and it's all covered, okay? We'll fold in the edges at a later stage. Okay, roughly the shape of the leaf. leaf. I'm gonna place the, shape, the leaf shape on top now. And then I'm gonna start on the needle felt. And so the process is just using the needle and just going in and out. If you want to be a bit quicker, you could use two needles, two needles at the same time. So I'm making a really thin leaf. I'm just going to show you. If I take this off now, you can actually see how it started to felt. And it's really thin. So if I pull this off now, it will be really, yeah, very, very thin, which is why I'm going to Decided to add a little bit more of the lighter green on top. And this is actually giving a really nice contrast as well because I got some different colors underneath and adding a little bit more so that I can kind of shine through a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add my template again and I'm going to carry on. So just a quick note with the needles, obviously they got barbs on them and you want to treat them really well because you will, you do need those barbs for felting. So make sure you don't go all the way down to hit the wooden board and also make sure with the needles not to hit the metal around it just because those barbs will break off over time and you want to preserve them for as long as you can. So this is all I'm basically doing now for quite a while. And then I'm going to start just to pull the wool in a little bit. And you can see, if you pull this off here, the wool is actually really pulled into the foam as well, yeah? And sometimes it's a good idea just to take it off in between once or so. And push all the wool into my cookie cutter. There we go, it's all in my cookie cutter now. And I think I'm just gonna carry on with one needle now because it is a bit easier to control. And I wanna get my wool into all the edges here now. And now this is just a matter of just keeping going. If you wanna have a go, Jason. Okay, before I have a go at this one, I'd like to have a quick chat. I think the noise might be a bit much. So we'll, I'll do that in cutaways. You'll see lovely cutaways. Yep. Um, but 
can we have a go? Is there another way, especially because we're talking about leaves, maybe berries, is mm -hmm. there a way of doing something that's even simpler than this that Absolutely. maybe I can do while, while yeah. we're chatting? Absolutely, yeah. You don't actually need a stone. You can actually go without a stone. So we'll just make a little bowl. You do so many different things. You know, you go do from bushcraft to, you know, different outdoor crafts. Well, what is it that you personally enjoy about natural crafts? Why why natural crafts? And why also, I think I've noticed that I've met lots of people that even within, say, say bushcrafts or certain weaving or crafts, they generally do one mm -hmm. of the things. Mm -hmm. What is it that interests you about doing so many different crafts? Yeah, I just really... Um, the first thing is probably um, I just love trying out different things. So I have I started off as a willow weaver um, when my kids were little. I was self-employed and so I sold some willow stuff. And then people came up to me and asked, so can you teach something? So I started getting into the teaching a little bit. And then, yeah, I just thought there's other things as well. We don't want to be always sitting willow weaving. There's so many different things you can learn. Like, yeah, today we are working with wool here. Um, and I'm just really interested in trying out lots of different things and experimenting. Some things go badly wrong if you have a first project, you know, and then you just keep trying and, yeah, learning from your own mistakes. This is really what I enjoy. And also that's also the thing what I like to bring across. I don't know if you noticed in the willow workshops, I'm not like a super um, professional willow weaver, I would say. Like I'm not sitting there every day and improving my technique and being really on it and, absolutely accurate yes i know the things how to do it but i also like to give a little bit of space for the people so they can actually put their own imagination in and some people mostly come for the social as well and this is fine absolutely fine so i just like to bring everybody together really and yeah them to have a good time and enjoy have fun i think it's really good i've really enjoyed like you say about the social aspect as well because mm -hmm with a lot of them kind of like what we're doing, once you get into a stage with a certain type of craft where it becomes not monotonous in a bad way, but something that you can do, but you can have a conversation at the same time. Yeah. It's then just a great place to be social. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, you know, because you get funding, mm -hmm. it's cheap for the people to go. So, yeah. so, it's, so it's so much cheaper for me to go than to go on Willow courses, which is one of the reasons that I'm filming this today and we're here is is we're not being paid to be here. That mm. this is I I Peggy I've done a video for Peggy in return for Peggy doing this video and then I did some photos of the place yep. in return for staying here and using this using it to do this. Mm. Um which I think is is great, but it's sort of it means then sometimes at the moment is trying to this is my way of trying to learn from people like yourself when you don't have a lot of money. Mm. You know, and it's great that also there's yeah. there's like yourself like CICs and ways for people who don't can't necessarily afford you know mm. a few hundred pounds for a for a weekend course absolutely yeah it's it's it still what gets them out they get to at least attempt to begin a process yeah. um while you know being social and getting yeah. to meet other people yeah that's really what i like about it having this wide range broad range of different things and then you're not stuck in okay this you've done well but I don't like your basket because you haven't done that, that in a technique you know so I like to just be a bit more flexible um, yes if you want to know all the techniques I can give them to you but really I'd rather you have fun and enjoy yourself as well and learn something from it and just yeah find a way how to how to work with a material you might not have worked with before and yeah connecting with nature is just so important for all, for everybody so, like I mentioned before, we've filmed some projects for Koi Cloud, some natural crafts, but we also filmed Peggy hasn't yet, but I'm it, getting Peggy to she'll be get a YouTube channel, going to start Absolutely. putting some videos. Yeah. One of the videos yeah. was what we did yesterday, which was, um, what's the title for that one going to be? I kind of blank now. <laughs> what did we do yesterday? Like, what does autumn mean to you? Yeah, that's the one, exactly, yeah. It was a really, really nice, just a little collection, just a bit of an idea. And again, like, as I said, not like full on, you have to do it this and this way, but just get a few ideas of what autumn means to you. So I'm talking a bit about different crafts, autumn crafts you can do, autumn activities, celebrations. So, yeah, and foraging. Which, yeah, that's the thing I really love. I love cooking over fires outdoors and it just gives the food a really different aroma and it's just, it makes the whole thing more of a celebration rather than just a simple 
I need to eat now because I need to eat. It's just, yeah. there's so much more to it. And yeah, when we have forest school, I have kids coming up and they say to me, oh, the chocolate, the hot chocolate made over a fire is just so much nicer than the one I can get at home. And yeah, so those sort of things, just really, like, really lovely to connect. And yeah, I love the cooking. I love the foraging as well. And yeah, just have a look. It should be out in the next, yeah, I don't know when, but yeah, we're it might be it out. Once. If you're watching this video, it probably will be out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a couple of seconds of montage, finishing off all the different projects, and then we'll probably come back again at that point. Actually, before that, is there anything to discuss in regards to the bag? How and where you cut? And is there anything you either do to the border or, or not? Yeah, no, so I wouldn't do much. So this is basically, obviously, this needs still quite a fair bit of felting here, as you can see, they're still coming apart here. So I would just carry on with the felting, either with the wrap around it, get my hands nice and wet and soapy, which I'll do in a minute, and just carry on with the felting. And then at one stage, when I feel like it's just a little bit more felted than where we are now, I will do a cut. Yeah, just use quite sharp, you need quite sharp scissors for that because obviously, yeah, it is a lot of um, dense material. And then I would not do anything to the cut. I just, yeah, do a straight cut but I will do a bit more felting once we've taken the stone out so you can see that as well. And then I basically just felt around it without the stone. So I will also go inside a little bit and do a bit of felting in, inside where the stone is the side. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so we'll show that all now and uh, then get to when, once everything's finished. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All finished. All finished. Oh, wow. What do you think? Even if, I mean, it could work as kind of like a belt pouch. It would, yeah. So, and I suppose for that, you would just cut in two slits? Yeah, just cut it in and it should be fine because it's felted now. It won't undo like any other material. So, yeah. Do you do any kind of care to this afterwards? No, obviously this hasn't been, um, it could probably do with another wash just to get all the soap rests or leftovers out. But other than that, just dry it really properly and then, yeah, just start using it. Every so often you can give it a wash. It's the same like with any other pure woolly material, natural materials. You don't want to boil them, boil wash. You just have a coolish wash and, yeah, that's fine if they get dirty if you need it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank so you. where can people find you? Is it Connecting With Nature CIC? Mm -hmm. so is that mainly the Facebook page? Yeah. So the Facebook page is called Young Angels Lampeter Stroke Connecting With Nature CIC. And yeah, as we said, I'm going to try and get a um, website together and YouTube and all that stuff. So anything we can just add afterwards, can we? Excellent. But if anyone was watching this video and they wanted to like book yourself maybe to do some workshops or something like yeah. that, the Facebook page would be the best Facebook one to go page, to? Facebook page, absolutely. Or I can leave my email, shall I do that? PeggyClaudia at yahoo.com if you're interested and you want to book anything. And yeah, looking forward to do some more teaching and yeah new projects excellent. like this one yeah. excellent okay well thank you peggy uh like okay. I mentioned the link for peggy's page will be down in the description thanks everyone and again we'll see you in the next one cheers